Addiction. Addiction is the loss of control over a lot of things because of drug use. I've told you guys, day in, day out, I was a drug addict. I was, a, I was addicted to many, many things, not just drugs. I was addicted to a lot of things, but I also made a lot of dumbass decisions because I was on drugs. Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Hey guys, what's up? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, thumbs up, thumbs down, leave a comment. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. Subanse la suburban. Alright guys, so addiction. The loss of control over yourself. Continuing to use despite consequences. And out of addiction, the brain actually changes. It starts to reward. It starts to like register pleasure and reward whenever you're using drugs. I've been to one, two, three, three sober living places here in Arizona. Solutions, solutions two, and pretty much I've learned to throw in the towel when I've had to because I know it was getting out of control and getting bad, all bad. You know, story of my life. I'll never forget. I was at a meeting one day and it, I, there was a lady there that had been going there all the time. And this is when I was my first time at a rehab center. And I was cleaning up and I shared my story at a NA, you know, group. And she came up to me and she's like, JC, you never hit rock bottom. You weren't out there on the street sucking dick for drugs. And I was like, thank God, shit, you know, I drew the line somewhere. You know, she ended up being one of my very close friends and mentors in this whole craziness, chaos, addiction life. I was addicted to money, I was addicted to women, I had a lot of addictions. So this is why I spent a lot of time going to meetings, going to services, listening to motivational stuff, all these things because I know for the rest of my life I have to keep a close tab on everything that I do and how I carry myself in order for me not to fall back in. Because it's really, really easy to do what's wrong, but it's really hard to be strong. You like that? I'm gonna copyright that. <laughs> but, like I say, I always share something positive with a part of my story that connects. Today, I'm gonna to share a story with you that's gonna show you how crazy addiction can be and the way that you think and the way that you become. It's crazy. So, after spending 15 years in the Mexican prison, Las Islas Marias, my best friend Ricardo was released. I was in Phoenix, Arizona at the time. Well, he told me, hey, can you pick me up in Nogales? I was like, yeah, I can go pick you up. So I started driving from Phoenix to Nogales, right? So I rolled up a couple of blunts, made sure I had enough cocaine, and I was drinking the whole way there. That's how crazy addicts think sometimes. Like they have to have that, that lunch box with them if they know they're going somewhere. And that's what's crazy is that I knew I was gonna be going to the border where there was a lot of police, a lot of border agents, a lot of fucking drug sniffing dogs, but I still did what I did. So I made sure I drank all the beer, I made sure I did all the cocaine, and 
as I was approaching the border, I was smoking my blunt. So the whole truck already smelled really bad, right? I had one blunt left. <laughs> Tell me why I thought it would be a good idea to put it in a sandwich bag and put it in between my cheeks. <laughs> why, JC? Why? Por qué? I don't understand. Well, I didn't want to lose it. And I didn't want to leave it somewhere so someone could find it and take it. I needed to have that in order for me to drive back and be able to be functioning. That's what I thought in my crazy ass fucking head. So, I cross over the border. I cross over, he's waiting for me at a McDonald's. I see him, what's up dog? You know what I mean? Me and Ricardo go way back to when I first did time in the Mexican prison and me and him were two peas in the pot. He's been my best friend from then, he's been my best friend till now. All, every time, every time, when he was already out, every time I went to prison, he found me, he put money on my books. I love that dude. Ricardo, you know I love you dude. You're my, you're my big dog, you know what I mean? My right hand man. And you know, he was one of my big, big connects for a while. So I pick him up, we jump in the car. The first thing he says, he's like, holy shit, your car smells like straight up fucking weed. And I was like, yeah, but I ain't got nothing. <laughs> he's like, you ain't got nothing? And I was like, so I told him the truth. I was like, you know, I got, I got it in between my cheeks. I didn't put it on my hat, I just had it in between my cheeks. And he's like, you gotta get rid of it. You gotta, you gotta throw it out. We're gonna pass customs, we're gonna, you know, we're past the border. The dogs are gonna smell it. And he was like panicking. I mean, he had just got out. <laughs> and I was like, chill out, dude. I got it in between my cheeks. They can't smell it. He's like, they're gonna find it. I was like, you're being too paranoid, man. You're scaring me right now. <laughs> so, we get to the fucking border, right? You know, they always ask you, American citizen, yes, where you were born, Chicago, Illinois. And I went through the whole thing, but then when they went over to ask him, I had forgot that this motherfucker had been in Mexico for so fucking long, he forgot how to speak fucking English. So his English is like bad. I'm talking about bad. And this motherfucker was born in Chicago, all that shit, but his English was so fucking bad, they were like, pull over. Now they think I'm smuggling a fucking illegal alien. So they pull us over. The agent comes out. He takes Ricardo out of the fucking truck and takes him inside the office. Now I'm standing there. The agent's calling for something on the radio. I know he smelled my fucking truck. So here comes another agent. He tells me, sir, do you have anything illegal in the truck? And I was like, no. <laughs> He's like, sir, do you have anything illegal in the truck? And I was like, no, I don't, sir. I get really polite when I'm talking to law enforcement. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't, sir. I have nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Is your friend an American citizen? I was like, yes, sir. He's an American citizen. I've known him for years. Why are you picking him up? Well, we're, I just decided to pick him up because he wanted to go back home. And they were asking me so many fucking questions that I was fucking high as a fucking kite. Like, I was gone. Then I was squeezing my cheeks so fucking hard, I was getting like muscle spaz. The dog kept on walking behind me and that motherfucker was making me nervous. He was making me nervous and I guess the, the agent was like noticing. And they told me, why does your car smell like marijuana? I was like, well, sir, I smoke a lot of marijuana. Sir, do you know that's illegal? I was like, I think so. 
Do you give us permission to search the truck? I was like, search it, tear it apart. Take the tent down, take the tires off. I don't care, where's my friend? They were questioning him in the fucking like interrogation room. <laughs> Making sure he was an illegal immigrant. So they're going through the fucking truck, they're shaking it down. That fucking dog keeps on walking behind me. I swear to fucking God. I was squeezing my ass so fucking hard, I was having muscle spasms on my glutes. For real, I was cramping up like a motherfucker. And he kept on passing by me, by me, by me, you know, and I, I felt like he was growling or he was talking shit, one of the two. And finally I see Ricardo come out, right? They're still tearing up the truck. They're going through the seats, everything. And I was like, sir, I just, I just smoked in there like yesterday, so it's probably gonna smell like that. Finally, they let us go. We get back in the truck. I look at Ricardo, I was like, that was fucking scary. He was like, motherfucker, I fucking told you. I was like, it wasn't my fault. Your dumb ass didn't speak English no more. I didn't know, you should have told me you didn't speak English no more. He's like, they took me into a room that had like stainless steel walls, stainless steel fucking tables, stainless steel chairs. He's like, I, I fucking panicked. So they had me in there, they had us, literally had us there for two hours, right? All right, so we start driving. I'm like, cool. I pull, pull my blunt out, you know? May shape it back up, light it up, start smoking. I didn't realize there was another fucking checkpoint right when you leave Tucson and to, and to Phoenix. So I was like, what the fuck? I was like, holy shit. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just gonna throw it out. I don't wanna go through no fucking bullshit again. So I throw it out. It's backed up. They're letting most of the cars pass by, pass by. As soon as we get up to the checkpoint, immigration, guess what? They make me pull over. They pull over. They start asking this motherfucker again if he's American. His broken ass fucking English is no good. So now they think he's fucking an illegal immigrant. So they take him inside the office. They're searching my car. The, car, the dog is barking his head, fucking head off in the fucking truck. They're asking me again if I have anything illegal. I'm like, I don't have nothing fucking illegal, man. I threw it out the window. This is what I mean, guys. Addiction makes you do a lot of dumb ass shit. It doesn't make you think about the consequences right there in that moment. It makes you lose a lot of family members. It makes you lose a lot of friends. It makes you lose a lot of money. You lose your fucking mind. This is why recovery is so important if you're struggling with an addiction. I tell you here all the fucking time. Was it easy for me? No, I'm gonna keep it real. It wasn't. It wasn't because I had been getting high for 30 plus years. I'll tell you bits and pieces of my story once we get in more into the, into these like chapters of my life. But there was a time where I came to Phoenix and I came down here with a lot and lost it all because of addiction. And that's when I decided to turn myself in and go into a rehab center, get cleaned up and try to get my life together. So my whole life, I've tried to change and be better, but I had to do it in bits and pieces. You're not gonna get it right the first time. You might not get it right the second time. It doesn't mean that you throw in the towel and you decide to live in chaos. Remember, expecting the same, expecting different results every time you get high is called insanity. You have to want to actually change and actually want to be somebody different to actually want to do it. You can't expect to be somebody different if you haven't done nothing you haven't done before. You have to. You have to put your ego to the side. You have to put all these things and actually know that you have a problem. It's been, it's been a crazy ride. It's been a crazy roller coaster. My life up, down, broke, money, 
alone, not alone. It's, it's been a crazy ride, but today I know what my purpose is. Today I know what I want out of life. And today I'm learning more things. I'm learning how to be a better dad. I'm, I'm learning how to be a better friend. I'm learning how to not be selfish because an addict is very, very selfish and only cares about them. So, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy the ride, my stories, my shenanigans. You know what it is. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Give somebody a hug. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live, homie. You might as well try and live it sober and outside of prison because it's a lot sweeter out here than it is in there. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.